it did look like a different planet rather than just another part of of the world. So this especially had something almost um, like an alien world about it. So it kind of caught my eye. This is a picture of a waterfall in Iceland. In the top right corner, I think you can see um, some people and cars which kind of give you a sense of scale to compare against. The main thing that attracted me to this particular angle was that I really wanted to get away from the, the photo that everyone else was taking. So most people would get out of the car from that spot and take the first picture they see and then drive back. So I tried to get a different angle and I liked that view that kind of looks straight down to the bottom of the waterfall and you could actually see the, the water crashing down. You could just get within a couple of meters, get your tripod down and you know those guys are going nowhere so you know they were sitting ducks so to speak. So this is a picture taken on Espanola Island in the Galapagos. Now these are marine iguanas. What's amazing about this picture to me is the detail. You know, you can see the individual scales. You can even see the individual scales on the eyelids. Uh, look at the, the claws as well and uh, the way that they're cuddling up to each other as they try and find a bit of space amongst the dozens, hundreds of other iguanas just lying around. It was actually really easy to take this picture. Uh, the thing about the Galapagos is that the animals there haven't really learned to be afraid of humans. It just shows you how comfortable and vulnerable they are as well. The picture just has so many depths in it. The stones, the, the mountains, the lakes, everything comes together so perfectly. This photo was taken in Isle of Skye uh, in Scotland three years ago. It was taken just after sunrise, one of those crazy mornings you go up before everyone is awake and trying to catch a beautiful scenery. Those are the kind of places that you go and you feel more connected to the ground, to nature, that are very isolated. You are not feel that interrupted by cityscape. That's what I like mostly in photography, the ability to go around and see beautiful places and try to expose it to other people. There's a tiny village there at the bottom, um, you know, a small village of people and then there's extraordinary mountainous features kind of towering over them when the reality of it is kind of who's having the bigger impact. Is it the man or is it, you know, is it the mountain? So that's kind of why I think this was one of my, one of my picks. The picture is of a valley near the small village of Andermatt in Switzerland. The warm morning glow is something that all photographers benefit from. You know, the light plays quite dramatically. You know, in the, in the features of the mountains and being in the valley, half of it's obviously dark. And so you see the sun coming across quite nicely. I've been lucky enough that I travel quite a lot. And I think photography's come out um, as a real passion in that. Helps me uh, remember it a lot better, but it's also something that I'm getting, you know, more and more passionate about. I'm just a starter. I only dive like, like 10 times so far. The water thing is my latest interest. The photo was taken 18 meters underwater in a dive site of Thailand. Condition was not good at that time. However, the underwater world never let you doubt. And this grouper along with those colorful Christmas tree worms caught my attention immediately. Christmas tree worms are quite choosy about their habitats. The grouper stay on the top of the coral made it feel like it was not only marking as territory but also guarding those beautiful small creatures. It's quite kind of scary in a way actually, kind of walking through this completely pitch black park and all you can hear is just the horns kind of rattling together as um, the stags do this kind of annual fight that, um, that happens. 
The image that I submitted to the competition is of a couple of rutting deers in a uh, deer park in North Norfolk. Typically, the animals can get quite skittish, so if you kind of move around too much, then they'll, they'll run off. But when they're like fighting one another, they just seem completely oblivious to anything that's going on. Any photographer will tell you kind of the best time of the day to shoot is like morning time or, um, or as the sun's going down. It just means it's a bit of extra effort to get up and uh, kind of haul yourself out of bed. I mean, because this was a good like hour's driveway from where I was based. So it's having to get up for like four, to leave at five, to get there for six, then to, to shoot from, you know, as soon as the light got good. On the left hand side, the two plates of both continents are actually pushing up. It's the tectonic plates which created Iceland, and apparently it raises uh, an inch each year. I took this photo uh, when I went to Iceland and it shows the tectonic plates as they meet. Uh, we went to this particular park uh, after spending most of the night up trying to catch the northern lights and uh, it was such a miserable night we couldn't believe how the weather had changed the next day and it was just one of those days which uh, everything seemed to go right. Those houses there, I think they're a tourist thing. There's a church and about five residents there. And I think they are used uh, by the people who manage the site. And they're doing things very important, like picking litter up and making sure that the tourists that go down the trails don't leave rubbish behind and spoil it for the next generation. The pelican is doing a yoga or a gymnastic, so that's why this particular photo was one of my favourite. This is a spot-built pelican which was shot in the bird sanctuary called Rangantitu. We decided to go on a trip, our family. So waking the family up and all, it was very uh, difficult in the morning. Somehow um, we made it through the time because morning time is the first time for birding. We hired a boat, we went in the boat and uh, during that time I shot this particular pelican which was which came to uh, exactly in front of us and tried to grab a fish out of it. It was trying to trap some fish where it will try to completely pull the water inside its beak so that uh, some of the fishes will get trapped. So that is the way that they will hunt the fish. When I think about bees, I also think about the environment and what is the impact uh, of bees on our future. The population of wild bees is decreasing and many people are, are thinking about it. A few years ago, I was uh, in the countryside. Uh, in the summer, it was a sunny day. I was experimenting with uh, macro photography. I photographed spiders, beetles, flies, uh, but most of them was not very appealing. Uh, when I tried with bees from different angles, the photos were quite interesting uh, because of the colors. After a dozen of photos, uh, one of the photos was r really good in focus and, and uh, with good balance of colors. We'd actually been there the year before uh, and it being Britain, the weather was awful and we saw nothing, so we ended up basically sitting in the car after getting rained on. The picture was taken on uh, Horsey Beach in Norfolk, very kind of windy, cold, so we uh, made the mile-long trek along the back of the dunes and as the dunes opened up, there was a colony of seals on the beach. The sea around there um, can be quite polluted you can see the the foam which i'm assuming is was not good foam <laughs> it looked um, pretty nasty that particular seal was basically just playing in the sea diving under the water popping his head up that shot was quite a lucky shot uh, it was one of the only times when he actually kind of popped his head up and looked directly at me i was quite a long way away but was lucky to have a telephoto lens with me so i was able to get quite a uh, a close shot of his face, which I think worked really well. <laughs>